Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, your host, True Seeker. We're back with another exciting episode of the True Seeker podcast. Got a special guest today. We're going to get into that interview here shortly. You guys are going to enjoy this discussion a lot. Trust me. Um, got to get to the business at hand and let all of you guys know who are supporting on Patreon that I am um, appreciative. Yo. Uh-oh. Okay, <laughs> wrong video. There's the Patreon video right there. I'm appreciative of everyone who is supporting over there. I got to give a shout out to everyone doing that. And what's so cool is that uh, today on, on the interview, I'm actually going to be speaking with one of the, the patrons today. So this is somebody who's been supporting my work for a, a while now. And uh, he just gotten behind the message and the vision. He's connecting with it. And I said, you know what? Let's uh let's sit down for a conversation. So this is really our first time uh, talking live over camera. You guys are going to get to see that, and as well as uh, talking for the first time. So um, he's been supporting for a while. So it's going to be for a very interesting show. Uh, give a shout out to the newest patron that we have this month and uh, just today even Jessica Riddle. Jessica, thank you so much for joining the family and supporting the work. And uh, I got your emails and everything. Thank you for the kind words and everyone out there who's, who's watching, um, live. Um, you know, if you, if you guys want, uh, you can call in, uh, the number streaming across the bottom of the video and across, across the top and, uh, and all the descriptions and all that good stuff. So a lot of cool stuff coming in the uh, near future and we will open up the phone lines here shortly. So with that being said, I think that's out the way the, 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 you know what I'm saying? The patrons, I got to thank you guys every, every, uh, episode because you guys are helping me do, um, this stuff and you know what I'm saying work on the music. Got some awesome music that I'm working on, getting ready to upload that, mixing down some stuff today, trying to get on top of it and doing some features for some people reaching out, building, doing what we do. And consistency is the key. Thank you guys so much for real. Uh, if you want to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker and sign up for any level of giving really it supports the work and supports the channel and everything i'm doing and trying to build over here so uh patreon.com backslash true seeker you get unreleased music extra podcast uh patron only membership group that we have as well so with that being said we're going to get into the discussion here i have my friend adam starseed bay what's going on brother uh, not much man how you doing Doing well, man. Welcome to the show, bro. Well, thanks for having me. I know we got a lot of stuff in common. You said that you resonate with the work and you've been supporting it for a while. So on camera, man, thank you so much for doing that, brother. It means it means so much that uh, that you believe in what I'm doing, that you support it financially, bro. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. So before we kind of get into anything, I know like in, in 
a lot of your pictures on Facebook and a lot of the stuff you share, you have a prayer shawl on. You're wearing your prayer shawl right now for those who are watching on camera. Adam has a nice white prayer shawl. And so since he has his on, I figured I would break mine out too. I haven't worn mine in a very long time. But let me let me put mine on. Hold on. Repping yeah. that black prayer shawl, brother. Right. No doubt, man. Yeah. This is, you know, what's so powerful about the prayer shawl is um, we talk about the secret place or the hiding place of going into the cave in the Old Testament of hiding from your enemies and spending time with 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 God, creator God. Um, the Jews would wear the prayer shawls and they would put them over their head and they would literally go into their prayer closet and they would shut off the world and they would be in this place where they would spend time with God under the prayer shawl. And that's what's really cool. And they would wear them everywhere they went. When they needed to pray, they would just go into that trance state in the, like pretty much no matter where they were. So do, do have you ever done that? Just had your prayer shawl on and been in that meditative state with the, with the most high? Oh, yes. I do that all the time. Um, not in public. Uh, yeah. I have worn it a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, was a, there was actually a funny story I'll tell you real quick. Um, I went uh, rafting with... Uh, with my friends and uh i didn't want to get sunburned i'm like you know what i'm just gonna read my prayer shawl and it was the most funniest thing because i don't really like to be in water that much so i said my prayer shawl on and everyone was looking at me and they were like man what the heck is that and i can imagine the um perception of people seeing me they're probably like who is that guy was it look like jesus or what <laughs> mm -hmm. that's pretty yeah. cool but no no this i i really love my prayer shawl a lot it really it really allows you to connect um like you said, with the father and with spirit. Really yeah. Do you have the, uh, the, the tassels on yours? Do you have the, um, the tassels or the seat okay. seats? You want to explain that a little bit for the people watching? Cause a lot of people don't, uh, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't know what that means. If you know that, uh, um, uh, you know, actually I don't even know what the tassels mean, honestly. Okay. Well, it, yeah, they're, they're, they're tied to, um, remember the covenants and almost like, a rosary, which a rosary is kind of like the uh, mala prayer beads, so that when you're praying, you're sitting there going through each knot, and each knot represents one of the commandments. Oh, nice! And so this is the same thing with the. Uh, I think it's 108 seeds mm -hmm. on the uh, mala necklace, and as you're praying the mala, you know you see that we see the the um the um Hindus do it. Also, oh, the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The Buddhists would do it as they're praying. So each prayer as they're moving it through their hands. And so it's pretty much okay. the same, the same symbology with the, uh, the, uh, Zit seats that actually remember the, the covenants of the Most High. That's what's really cool about it. Like during prayer, you go into and just count the, the blessings <laughs> and just remember the covenants and stuff as well. And there was a bunch of that stuff. It's just like an outward, um, symbol or an outlet, um, outward, representation of an inward work or inward uh, covenant that God has made with his people. And it's an everlasting covenant. And so you look in the oh, old it. Testament, you see a whole bunch of different symbols and stuff that uh, was like, if it's uh, symbols or putting uh, the um, tassels on the, the uh, doorpost and holding them as a um, front lip between your eyes, even the, uh, the uh, headpiece that you're wearing as well, the Mitri is wrapped a certain amount of times as symbolic to just represent the customs. Like as you're, as you're going through the ritual to remember what you're doing versus like, Oh, I'm just going to put my clothes on for the day. Like they would actually wear this stuff under their clothes and stuff, which is really cool. I got, I got some friends who were, who were into it and we studied messianic Judaism for uh, a couple of years and we were into that. That's what I picked up on all that stuff. So, um, tie in maybe Hebrew roots in with, Christianity and then tying in mysticism with it a little bit. W what's your story, man? Cause we want to talk about ET contact, alien contact and some really far out stuff that we can get into with meditation and astral travel, remote viewing, but to kind of go back for like your religious roots and stuff, where did you start out at? Um, basically, um, I've always been connected, um, with the Christ energy, like for since I was like two years old since I, can remember but i never really knew about christ but i was born and raised in a christian home and uh my mom uh told me that like i i said i wanted to give my life to christ right um so i've always had that connection um i went to a private church school uh, so i've always had some kind of connection with christ and 
that's always been my foundation and that's what I continue to this day to let people know that Christ has always been that foundation uh, for me, not just, not just for like the religious reasons um, or things like that, but it's just, it was always a story that really uh, just fascinated me about on how he went into the world and uh, it didn't allow, didn't allow the way of the world to overcome him. You know, he spoke his truth. Um, he laid down many parables, um, which parables is an amazing thing itself. But, you know, there's just, it was just something about it. So I always use Christ as a foundation for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and just through any challenges that I went through. Um, but as a whole, I mean, my, my childhood and teenage years, um, I spent a lot of time uh, at home because I was homeschooled and everything. So I've had a very interesting experience. So whenever you... Um had that that uh, journey that experience was you was you guys going to church and stuff i know you say your parents were religious but were you raised in in the church like going to sunday school and and prayer services and things like that oh yeah yeah we we went to the um church that uh i was going to school at okay um so i went there all the time and then we ended up having my parents had a falling out with that church um so we kind of got out of that and then i kind of bounced back and forth between churches with my cousins kind of you know uh learning different things um you know trying to just figure things out in life because i was so young you know um but i can never and that was the thing with me is i never could really relate a lot with the church because it always it it always felt like there's something missing and like you know i always went there to learn about christ and everything like that but it just the preacher itself it never really resonated with me all the time unless they talked about uh, self healing, uh, yeah. learning about how to heal yourself. So that always clicked. Mm-hmm. I think um, being very um, empathic, people can go to church and you can sense like ulterior motives and people trying to build crowds and, and, and move numbers and things like that. So it can be like a place that we're supposed to find healing and find freedom in, but many people going there are sensitive to the spirit realm and, and, and there's something that don't sit right. And many times people don't know what that is, or there's a reason why I don't fit in here. And you're the outcast cause you're supposed to fit in. Like, you know, this is the Christian thing to do. You know, wh- you know what I'm saying? Why do you have a problem with the pastor? Or why do you have a problem with some of the other members and things like that? Right. So I think a lot of people, uh, you know, go to the churches and they don't fit in for a reason, but they just don't know it. And it creates problems. You know, why do you know, they think it's something wrong with them or maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not really a Christian. Maybe I'm not really saved or th- this type of work, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like with me, I always ask questions. Always been kind of the question guy. Yeah. I was pretty shy too when I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always asked interesting questions. And the thing is too, is when I was, in churches is that I could always feel that, that energy around me, you know, um, you know, whether it be, I would see, um, like bright lights and things like that, you know, just catching my eye. Cause I always, through my whole childhood and teenage years, I always had very deep dreams. Um, I was haunted by shadow beings a lot, a lot. And it wasn't just in dream time, but in real time. Yeah. Uh, so that, that always was there for me. Um, so that was the experience as well. But I couldn't really talk about it because, I mean, it's like I didn't know what was going on. We didn't have the Internet at the time. I yeah. couldn't really talk to my parents about it. You know, it just was an experience. Um, but um, going back to the church thing, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't really relate with anybody totally because it just was like, you know, I I had different encounters in everybody. And not everybody took it seriously in the church. Yeah, it's like know, they went right? to church. That's the they went thing. to church. Yeah, they went to church, and then as soon as they left the church, they were a totally different person. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, I don't know. And then I went to a, a church camp. Oh, man, that was a, that was a totally different experience because I expected to be all, you know, religious and loving God and all this stuff. And then the people were cussing. Stuff, yeah. yeah, cussing. I was, I, was, uh, um, I was bullied in there. Like, it literally, I had two people bullying me the whole time. Like, hey, give me your money. Hey, give me your candy and all this stuff. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, but why- but it really, 
but as a whole, it really, you know, all of my experiences, I don't regret because yeah. as a whole, as you grow in life, you really realize why you had those experiences. And it, it's good to really, you know, share them um, with everybody because it, life is an experience and it is a journey. Yeah. Um, it's a soul journey. It, it's pretty amazing. Those um, times at the um, Christian camp, I, I guess it kind of depends on the de- denomination as well. Cause I know that like people are going to be like that. Kids are going to be kids and things like that. And you have, um, let's see, you have, uh, people who are having encounters though. So they're like, I don't know if that was a, the, the type of church camp you went to because a lot of kids would come back after church camp and be like on fire for God, like in the youth group and stuff like that. And they, and that was something to look forward to. Was it like that at all? Or was it just like almost like a daycare, like a hangout? There was, was there any spirituality there at all? Prayer and things like that? Uh, Yes, it was, it was very, uh, I mean, it was, it was great the way it was set up because we could like, you know, go shoot arrows and we would go hiking and things like that. It was very Christian oriented, but it was the children the kids that were there <laughs> that were just there just to be there. I yeah. you know, it just was a hangout thing. So it was an unique experience. But for me, since I was getting bullied and all that stuff, it was uh it was a pretty tough situation yeah. for myself. Plus I got a severe sunburn and that didn't help anything. <laughs> so <laughs> No. I wanna say a, a quick shout out to everybody who's uh joining us in the chat room. Um Adam's in the chat room while he's on here as well. Adam's always in the chat room on like every episode. So shout out to him for always being a trooper, hanging out with us here. Lori, Jesse, Chris, uh, Duke, what up, everybody? Um, Jesse, yeah, I gave you a shout out at, at the beginning. I got your emails and uh, gave you a shout out at the beginning of the episode. So uh, thank, thank, thanks you guys for uh, holding us down live uh, in the chat room. And people who are listening to this after the fact you got to uh, check us out on youtube go ahead and subscribe to get alerts when we go live because i get messages and stuff all the time people want to know when they can call in and stuff so make sure you're doing that um adam wanted to ask you about um the holy spirit so you know a lot of us have had these encounters which took the spirituality to to another level of having an encounter most of us in churches or in in um, home meetings and in, in prayer groups, that's where mine happened when I gave my life to Christ and had this overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit come in into my life. And it was a bodily manifestation. I began to shake and weep and cry. And it was this most beautiful, precious encounter that felt like all the drugs put together. But it was a beautiful feeling like it was an actual high that I got from it and crying and tears and stuff like that. Did you have that encounter as well? Something similar? Uh, yeah, kind of, like I said, I've always been connected in some way, shape or form. Um, um, when I was going through some pretty, uh, tough times in my life, uh, I really, really just kind of, you know, broke down and cried sometimes, um, with Christ and just kind of just felt that energy and presence and, yeah, you know, so you can feel the energy. communicating. Yeah. You yeah. Can feel yeah. It. Okay. Communicating and exchanging the energy. Cause you know, a lot of people call it as prayer, but it's really a form of meditation. And when you really truly connect with yourself um you really begin to feel that presence of love you know every time if i did have a hard time um christ always spoke to me he just said hey it's okay you know it's okay to be you know to be sad or it's okay you know i'm always here for you you know the inner voice Mm -hmm. um that essence is always there and me just talking about it you know you can always just feel that that love and energy that's around you yeah and you know it's it's and it's nothing about you know like i think some people really just kind of just want an answer from christ you know but you really just have to sit down and just release yourself and just yeah. allow the spirit to speak within you you got to go within um and and that's the weird thing too because i mean you know what i'm saying we talk about that and it's very um it's something plain it's like in it's like an everyday thing that we have this connection and, and there's a feeling that's involved. There's a tingling sensation. There's a euphoria when we when we connect into the spirit realm. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's for everybody. We definitely teach it like it's for everybody. And we teach it the way that like anybody can tap in, anybody can tune into that frequency with God and in prayer and feel his presence. And that, that presence uh, is a relief. You know what I'm saying? It helps us get through 
uh, hard times and situations. But I, I do have friends in the churches and uh, who have never encountered that. They've never felt that. And it's um, and they feel let down because they haven't felt that that presence around them, you know. And uh, have you ever had any any conversations with people like that who are like and then and then sometimes they get on the offense and say, well, you guys are just looking for a feeling. You guys don't believe you guys are just if the feeling was gone, you guys would leave that type of stuff. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I have a lot of a, a lot of conversations um, then and a lot more now is that, you know, a lot of people can't really resonate with that Christ energy. Um, I'm friends with, uh, you know, some atheists and, uh, you know, they really just look at the science base of things. So it's, you know, it gives me a perception of, you know, a lot of people just don't know what this, what, what, a what energy is, yeah. um, that, that flows through you, you know, everybody just prays and just wants answers. They want answers, but they're not realizing that they're seeking, they're going inside stuff. They're going into that darkness. Um, to truly find your inner self because a lot of people focus so much on a physical reality that that's all they know you know that's all they know and especially if you never been to church or any have anything of that nature you know you don't know what you're looking for you know even myself you know I've always known about energy but I didn't really know the full extent of energy um, until later on but yeah I definitely feel that if you have that personal experience you know what you're looking for, but for those who never have that experience, it is definitely difficult for them to really discover that energy. Have you um, ever that, had the opportunity to pray for someone, whether it's in person or over the phone, and them have that encounter for the first time uh, with you praying for them or speaking that blessing over them, and they feel that energy and that bliss for the first time? Have you ever had that that encounter? Were you actually able to uh, it like? kind of walk somebody through it or administer it to them or pray in faith that they'll have an encounter. Have you ever had that? Not really. No. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've done prayer requests for people and I let them know, you know, that, Hey, if you need anything, um, you know, I can help you there, but no, yeah. I've never really had that, that kind of, uh, experience. But yeah. Cause I know, I know you, I know you do private sessions with people and stuff too on your, on your Facebook and you offer sessions and stuff for people to help them find inner healing. But, um, cause that's, that's what I was curious about. Um, but everybody does oh, it yeah. a little bit different too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and, and, and speaking of that, yeah, I just, I just started, uh, those sessions. So it's like, it's, it's really new. I never really promoted myself out there, um, mm -hmm. because I felt at the time I wasn't really ready. Because I, I think you really have to be emotionally ready and set in that, you know, to learn on how to heal um, somebody. Because, you know, a lot of people go through a lot of stuff. And if you're not ready for it, you know, and this is where church is coming. If you're not ready for someone's unique experiences, whether it be through trauma or, you know, drug abuse or, you know, going through a, a divorce or things like that, you know, you have to be mentally prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's where I waited until now to give up my sessions because I'm a very uh, diverse person and I accept everyone for who they are, you know, and that's that's an key acceptance. And that's what, you know, that's what Christ taught us is, you know, you don't want to you don't want to push people away. You know, I mean, they're never going to really experience self-healing if you constantly push people away or, you know, the term resonating. I mean, if somebody's negative. You can't just push them away. You got to just be able to just to let them know you're there for them. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people just don't have anybody to go to or even know where to even begin for the healing process. Yeah, that's a big part of it, man. A big part of it is just a lot of people, um, whether, you know, they book a private session with you or just in general. And it, it's weird because, you know, the people who reach out in that form that they really want it. Like, you know what I'm saying? If they're, if they're actually willing to pay for a session or pay for your time, they want it. And as far as the way faith works, like, they pretty much already got it. Like, it, if, if you can connect your faith to it, that you're willing to pay for it, it lets you know that they want it. And that's how the universe responds or God responds. The scripture says that without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? So you find people who are just there ready and most of them need somebody to talk to or need guidance. And like I've said in the past, like 
a lot of people who reach out to me are people who want to do what I'm doing. They want to offer sessions for people. They have giftings and abilities within them that they want to loose to the world and, and to be used of God. They feel it there. They see it in their dreams. And it almost plagues them because they see it as it's somebody else and it's not in the now moment. So it's like, how can I do this? Can I do this? Is it in this way they need somebody to talk to? Whether it's activating stuff in the spirit, moving things around, shifting things in the spirit realm, which we do as well. So it's really cool uh, to see, you know what I'm saying, many of us light workers, star seeds on the same path of, of bringing healing, true healing to, you know, the inner child, the inner wounds and stuff that we have uh, where things kind of leach onto us or cl cling to us. Um, and there's ways to get rid of it. There's way when you're talking about energy in order to believe in positive energy, we have to believe in negative energy as well. And that's a universal law polarities in everything. And just because it's negative doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean that just because you have trauma or some bad things in your life. I believe that we're to learn from everything, you know, and I believe that we if we can't learn from the past that we're doomed to keep creating it or keep reliving it and the, or those entities that we've given permissions to be here in our minds and in our midst and things like that so it's awesome that you talk about energy a lot and you also go live on your facebook page as well uh giving lessons and short teachings about this energy and stuff too and how people can connect and that's awesome that that you do that oh yeah definitely yeah and um and reason why i do uh videos and things like that is to be that voice because like myself i was in a very you know, very kind of depressive state for quite a few years. And uh, I never had a voice uh, for myself. Yeah. Um, I think about the only conversation I really ever had was with my mom. Um, and then all my other friends, uh, they were always end up being into drugs and just never had no spiritual aspect. So. Yeah. Um, so I really, really was by myself. So, you know, it took a lot of praying and meditating um, and just that willingness, that self healing um, that, you know, I gave myself, you know, there, there was a lot of times that I really, really was depressed to the point where, you know, I just didn't want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think everybody reaches that dark point in their life where they have to make a choice, you know, whether they want to, to continue or whether they want to end it. And that right there is when you encounter, when you can encounter, um, that, that love and that energy that dwells within you, you know, that voice will say, Hey, wake up you know i've always been there for you mm -hmm. uh, you know and that it, that's part, uh, it yeah, gives that, me a little no that's part of carried getting, up right there yeah, but of, of, of like but getting, that's real stuff right there getting the inner healing that you're able to go back and see god working or let god work in those other areas of your life and like we went through a christian um healing and deliverance sessions right years ago when i came out of some really deep witchcraft um and i was going crazy i had all kind of stuff going on with me but we went through these deliverance classes man and i got a lot of healing through it right it changed me like my relationship with christ changed but this was like monumental as well to go and do these classes and uh um and one of the things was seeing jesus go into the different traumatic areas and what he would say and how he would bring healing and to visualize that and, and say, okay, what would Jesus say here? What if Jesus stepped in, what would he do? Like, that's the way they taught me to do it. And obviously it doesn't have to be done that way, but it is about going back to those, you know what I'm saying? Those, those places of hurt and, um, and kind of speaking healing there or seeing healing. And we need people to help us do that. Um, which is crazy to me because we, I always look, I, it, it opens up the whole realm of possibilities of, uh, of Jesus being outside of space and time and him being able to, to, to travel, right. And to actually go back and fix your past and clean it up as if it has never happened. Like the word justified, uh, like it's like a play on words, just if I'd never sinned, he removes our sins as far as the East is to the West as we don't have to carry that baggage anymore. Like that's the person of Christ. Right. And so when we get healing Christ or that, positive energy however you want to word it i really don't care but it allows you to it, it can move to your past and make it like it never happened where you're not you're not you're not affected by that anymore where you should have been a, 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 a 
something that was a scar that you should have took to your grave and is affecting the way that you act and the way that you believe and the way that you treat people because of something that happened to you when you was a child or something that someone else did that you had no power over, but you're able to tap into the energy, the Christ energy, Christ consciousness at its highest level. And it's as, it's as if it never happened. That's the power of, of true inner healing. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, with uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh oh man, <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought right oh, now, good, bro. I I wanted to ask you as well because we're talking about, I know we're we're skipping some things, and so we're talking about energy. We're talking about moving into the spirit realm and getting healing and stuff like that. But that has to start from a place as well, because like that's not a uh, uh, just a total Christian belief. Like not all Christians or not all spiritual people believe in what we're talking about, right? Um, it takes some things to happen, right? So, from moving from one level of just being a someone who goes in the church, who goes to church, or someone who even goes and even if you don't fit in, you're still going that type of deal, which was kind of your story. But we talked a little bit before yeah. the show about you having this encounter back in 2010 that really took everything to a, like a deeper level of understanding. And it was talking about ET contact and being just all of this stuff that is real in the movies and it's real in the books, but understanding that, wow, this stuff is real for all of us. Like anything that we can imagine or believe is real and these entities and beings exist. And you had an encounter back in 2010, if you want to talk about that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just touch base real quick. Um, I mean, in terms of, like, you know, I think a lot of people really focus too much on the church itself and trying to find find a connection with that with uh with yeah. that Christ energy or that energy. But as a whole, you really have to just realize that you're not you're not going to a place. The place you're really searching for is within inside yourself. You know, that true teaching is going to be within you. Yeah. Uh, it always is. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna leave your church. You're gonna leave your work. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be home. And that's where you really have to truly learn how to Yeah. That's the power, man, to, to understand that heaven is within, that the kingdom of heaven is within you and everything that you need. And I like to say that we don't need anything that they're selling us. Like we don't have to go to the pastor anymore. We don't have to go to the clergy. That's where Christ came in and Christ, Christ bridged the gap where the high priest would have to go to God on your behalf. Christ comes in and he bridges the gap so that we have direct access to the father. Uh, we can go in those places ourselves through prayer and through meditation and access the Father's heart directly, and we can encounter. And so that changes Christianity as far as believing somebody's gospel or going, or you living off of my encounter with God. And that's one thing that's really near and dear to your heart, that we all can have these encounters, and we all can teach people how to do that. Oh, yeah, and that's what it's about, right? encountering God for us. Oh yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. You got to have that. Yep. Yep. And this is where, you know, where you have to have that personal experience um, with yourself always, because it's always you. I mean, you close your eyes, it's always you. Um, so we can get into the, by 2010. Um, so in 2010, a lot of things happened, not just for me personally, but a lot of people were having, sharing the same experience. Um, they were having this kind of awakening process. And I've always been connected spiritually um, anyway. Uh, so I don't know what it was, but, uh, but I'll just give you a little story. So, um, I was uh, at work and I saw this newspaper in it and I saw this Norway that, or the spiral that happened in Norway. And that really piqued my interest because I've always been interested in, in ETs. I watched X-Files, a huge fan of Star Trek and things of that nature. Um, so I've always, always looked beyond, you know, I never limited myself. I knew that there was something out there. Um, something always watching me and protecting me, um, and as well as personal experiences when I was a kid. Um, I want to talk about that because that was a talk forever. Um, so I've always been interested in ETs and things like that. You know, I always saw moving stars and um, things like that. And my parents, you know, they always told me they were satellites, but yeah. I learned recently that that's a different story yeah. there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, in 2010, it, something clicked in me and, you know, it's, it was really hard to explain, but something just clicked like a alarm clock. And I just started researching like crazy, everything from conspiracy theories 
to uh to et encounters to the third eye um uh deep meditation and kundalini and things of that nature i was just so focused on this nearly for a whole month i was just researching every day i get off work and research 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 constantly and i started to um look into channeling things like that um and back then it was pretty a negative aspect of you know oh you don't want to be playing with this stuff because you know um demons are going to possess you and things of that nature but for me personally i always have to discover things for myself i don't take what people say literally you know mm -hmm. you have to discover things for yourself and that is definitely key in anybody you have to experience things for yourself or it's yeah. just words just words um so i really dove deep into meditation and really just kind of just started to to look at my body and started to feel the energy um and the funny story is is back in uh 94 95 um dragon ball z i became a big fan of dragon ball z and i you know a lot of people say things about anime and stuff but the thing that really stuck with me about dragon ball z was the energy was the um the energy behind it just boosting up your chi your kai yeah. um and just uh but the thing that really clicked with me is that goku he had a, a power called the spirit bomb and the spirit bomb uh was focused it just focused everybody's energy you know their hopes their dreams of saving the planet um it just was everything was energy from trees to roads to you know to everybody and animals and everything was just all connected it just became one big thing and when i looked at that i was like oh, wow this really clicked with me so i looked into meditation and stuff back in in 95 96 and kind of experiment with it but never really got anywhere with it but when 2010 happened i remembered all that i was like oh hey i remember this so i really started to just look into grounding your feet in earth and just start imagining um that energy flowing into me you know using my mm -hmm. feet as roots like trees yep. and just flowing the energy through me so i began to slowly build that up and start to have that energy flow through me um, so while I was experimenting in that aspect, I started to want to figure out what was going on um, because I was a big fan of the Matrix movie. I mean, anybody who is real curious about X-Files and ETs and stuff like that always come across the Matrix as yeah. a foundation. So, uh, so I started looking at that because a lot of people were like, man, a lot of this stuff is an illusion. And, things like yeah. that. and uh, people were, you know, when you turn into channeling, people transform into a a being or an entity and that really perked my curiosity of who is speaking this so i had to find out for myself i had to know on how to connect and just truly find out you know what these soulless beings are well not soulless but you know bodiless beings yeah um so i began to start uh doing remote viewing um i kind of heard vaguely about remote viewing so i wanted to find out exactly what the source of energy was and this is where things really began to be quite interesting. Um, and I was quite, uh, I wouldn't say blessed, but I just was, I was, everything was turned on. Um, my third eye was turned on. Just, I was just full blown in effect. The spirit just gave me all of this awareness uh, to look at things. So when I was doing my remote viewing, um, I ended up encountering uh these gray beings you know the the famous gray entities and uh while i was trying to look into like uh um underground bases and trying to just kind of get the fill out of what makes this world run uh, but these uh gray beings were always there and they were kind of giving me like a like a psychic a psychic like trying to cut me off but i didn't allow it to because i always had christ i was like okay christ you need to just a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times when you're approached by that kind of stuff, that pulls you out of the meditation. So, okay, it, it's it, getting deep. I'm not trying to get yeah. my soul stolen or get abducted. And that, and we cut it off there because I've had similar encounters where beings will come. And it, it's scary. You're sitting at home by yourself and you think of beings in your room watching you or, or like physically manifesting, you know. So that's awesome. You kept going with it with that light of Christ, man. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a trippy experience. Um, I, I had to turn it off a couple of times because I was just like, holy cow, yeah, yeah. because I had so many uh, experiences with shadow beings. I had to really be yeah. careful because I, yeah. I can feel energy. I can feel beings around me all the time. I mean, if you seriously think, you know, that you are alone in this world, you're not. I mean, if you could see beyond the veil, you would realize that there is just thousands and thousands of beings around you all the time. Um, it's pretty pretty trippy experience yeah um so but i i had to keep going because you know if you allow fear to run your life it you're never gonna you're never gonna know the answer you're never gonna know anything so i just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and these entities you know were getting pretty ticked off with me but um I was able to uh kind of go into the underground bases kind of learn how things ran um and it's it, it it was a pretty uh, trippy experience. Um, I I don't know if I should really talk about it or not. I I talked with with Truth Seeker here a little bit about my encounters uh, with it. Um, I don't know if I should really talk about it or not. If but you, uh, if you think uh, I mean, if you think it, uh, people can benefit from it, you know, whether it's a uh, danger or uh, a certain way to do it that that can help them, definitely, man. You know. Oh yeah, like an easier way um, to do it because I know you said you have a different approach as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, uh, so if you guys ever do really decide to really channel beings, really, really know your surroundings. Um, so when I really started to dig deep, deep, dig deep into uh, these underground bases, I really kind of got the awareness, you know, that that our psychic link and our energy is really the key to breaking through this reality. Um, we are very special beings. We really are. Um, and these entities that, you know, they're disappearing right now, but at the time they are really so focused on learning on how this energy works. So they're, they're trying to tap into it. Either they're trying to bring something in or bring something out. Um, and, uh, children i learned that children were involved in these kind of pets and this is what really you know it really concerned me a lot and uh and these these underground bases are really heavily guarded um i mean there's literally i mean anything supernatural or any sci-fi thing you watch man is like legit it really has some kind of truth to it so not only do they have these little little gray beings that are psychically linked but they also have these these warriors that are with them, um, you could call them like um, like lizard type people uh, being. Um, it's it, it's it's heavily guarded. I mean, literally, this there's messing around with this stuff. It didn't know we got army, we got um, it's all of a lot. And when you're when you're diving into this connection with and learning more about the connect with other beings that surround us. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. They're, yeah. they're underground, they're in the water, they're above us. And just like I learned, um, and true seeker pointed out the Testament of Solomon, you know, they're even the stars in the sky themselves. You know, we think we're looking at stars, but they're really just a, a form of energy, a form of being. Um, and I've had encounters physically, uh, with, with balls of light, just, me through the sky yeah um orange yeah. falls and things of that nature and i even have recently had an encounter in my dream a couple of days ago uh something told me to look outside in my dream and i saw the um aurora borealis just right out in front of my house and i'm like what in the world is going on here um i went outside and then this orange ball came from that aurora borealis and stopped right above me and was just checking me out how, how, and I was trying to like, communicate like, how, how with far, it. How far was it above you? Uh, it was it was pretty far. I would say maybe I don't know, maybe a thousand, probably a thousand feet or more. It, it was pretty high, but it okay. stopped there. But the interesting thing was is that I closed my eyes, trying to communicate with it, right? And then I opened my eyes and it was gone. But this dog showed up like right after, and. I knew subconsciously I was dreaming, so I don't want to be spooked by it. Uh, but I was like, oh, hey, come here, dog, whatever. But that entity that was up there transformed into that dog. And it was testing me. It was testing to see on how I would react. Because with dreams themselves, 
they actually dreams are a communication from it can be from different beings yeah. it can be from a self healing um we're all connected psychically in some way shape or form so it was, it was a quite an amazing encounter i had just with that one alone so um and that's how you kind of yeah go ahead no i would say you know we're kind of uh talking about contacting ets or them contacting you right um so would you say that you contacted those entities as you're going into the, the those realms or are you just randomly seeing what's out there they're just randomly passing by because a lot of people have that fear of astral projection and going into some of the other realms is they're scared they're going to get possessed they're scared that they're going to encounter demons and darkness and things like that or shadow beings or whatever that can harm them a lot of people believe so that that that's a, a barrier and they never get past that fear um but but knowing if you're walking in the energy of Christ, that perfect love casts out all fear. And that's what Christ's energy is, is the perfect love. Um, and so that's a boldness that allows you to go there because you're made of that love and you're, connect, you're one with Christ. You're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus to know who you are, to be able to access those realms and not be afraid to move past an alien gray that you think may have ulterior motives in, in those realms right there's places i've gone and i've stopped i've i've I, and i'm not an expert man I re, i'm really not but i've been to places where i've stopped and it scared me like i felt like something was pulling my spirit out of my body or seeing a a being in the room with me or something and it scares me and I, and I snap out of it and i come back to my body and there's all all of that stuff and so you have to learn like even when you're when you're trying to leave your body and you actually feel feel the, the euphoria and the sensation of you leaving like that can snap and wake you back up so there's a bunch of trial and error and trying to learn with it but so there's a confidence there too to know who you are and know that nothing can can harm you right um but oh, so oh yeah as, definitely as far as exploring and contacting entities so have you set up through meditation or stargazing to go out there with the intention of what I like to call when I guess when it's dealing with, with ETs is a CE five encounter where you go out and not, you go out and stargaze and they don't contact you, but you actually in turn contact them and they show up. Have you had those encounters? Uh, I've had a lot of meditation encounters. Um, mm -hmm. definitely um, not only from different ETs, but for me seeking, I mean, I actually search these search for them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I always had different encounters. Um, I always stargazed. Um, a lot of my medicine was outside um, because I, I wanted to have, yeah. I always had that mindset of, hey, if I can see you guys through meditation, I want to see you physically. Exactly. Right? And you can't. I always though, had that mindset, hey, I want to see you physically. It's a confidence and, there. Uh, yeah. But, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and the thing was is that I was always being shown, but they couldn't show me entirely on their physical form because it's different. It's a different projection. Uh, but they showed me through through stars. I didn't know, like I said, again, I didn't know at the time, but I always saw these moving stars, and I'm like, what is going on? And what they're is this? communicating and there was telepathically, one time, yeah. Quite a few times. Yeah, I had quite a few times where I literally saw a fleet of moving stars, like literally 30 stars are moving. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh, yeah. what in the world is Outside going on? Outside the atmosphere, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, it, was, it was uncanny. And it, it was usually after my meditation session. And that was my answer there. But I couldn't click it together at the time. Um, but yeah, um, as far as, as connecting with ETs, you definitely have to have that uh, a train trial and error thing because it, the fear really takes in. Because I mean, literally, if you see a being just staring at you, because that's what you get, you will get an image of that person's face right in front of your face. Like they'll just be <laughs> right there. And you're like, holy moly, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it it will say it, it can scare the crap out of you because you're going whoa am I hallucinating is this for real you yeah. know um but no you 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 definitely have to have that kind of mindset and it's it's nothing to fear because there you have to look at it this way is that it's just like meeting a stranger you know they could be a super nice person or they may be out to get you you, you don't know you really don't know and that's where you just have to communicate yep. and with me personally I learned about uh, shields creating shields around you using that and like I said using that Joshua that Christ energy to build a golden aura around me and you really have to you really have to learn how to protect yourself with energy as you are exploring into 
into that psychic realm. Um, you really have to take precautions because it's, it's no joke. It's not a game, you know, and you know, that it frustrated me quite a bit when people were just like, oh, okay, let's go channel these people and let's see what happens. Yeah. And people just allowing these beings to inhabit their body. And I'm like, whoa, ho, ho. Yeah. you do realize that when beings come into you, they become a part of you. Their residue becomes a part of you. And that's something I'm doing some research on now as well is that you really, it, it's not an old child's game. You really have to be careful when you start, you yeah. know, learning how to do projections and astral traveling um, and things like that, because astral travel itself is a form of leaving your body. You're still connected um, by your cord, just like when you're a baby. You're still connected by your cord, but it leaves your body um, vulnerable uh, to different beings if you're not using the right protection, using your guides and guardians protect your body while you're traveling through um and that's definitely something that everybody should really do research on every aspect definitely yeah um you got to learn how to protect yourself psychically like going out there into those realms and dealing with people and it's it's a trial and error thing too but it also it also bleeds over into reality where you got to learn how to protect yourself around people and information you share and who you get close to and things like that, right? You find people who are manipulative and you don't know that when you first meet them because they're good at wearing a mask or stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you, you learn that with people too. And just like you can discern the spirits, th those spirits are on people and in people, right? We're talking about them living in them and on them and around them that they keep company with negative entities or a lying spirit or conniving or backbiting spirits it's it's, it's so funny that it, we, we get deep with it because there's a manifestation of an entity but the spirits are personas that people embody and in this and i've got a whole i've got all the bible scriptures written down of like spirit of love spirit of joy spirit of peace spirit of envy like where it talks about these what we would say are feelings maybe but they are personifications that land upon people lying backbiting stealing it's a spirit that gets upon you and it, it lives and moves through you and it, it feeds off of you and we would maybe say that that was an emotion but that's not us to identify that you have to know who you are because that's what those spirits try to do especially like the familiar spirits which would like to, to tell you that they're a part of you and so when they talk, you feel like it's coming from you because you feel like that spirit is a part of you as well. Um, there was a, a question in the in the chat. I'm going to uh, get uh, answer that right quick. But uh, Jesse says, is meditation and prayer one in the same? I'll let you hit that. But I want, I'll say that um, we like to, it's the, the phrase is kind of coined. Prayer is when we talk to God. Meditation is where God talks to us. I think that they're one in the same. I believe it's more of a conversation where um, prayers like we can offer up our prayers or talk to the Father and then we leave. Now, hold on. I want to talk to you. It's, so it's a conversation piece where we have to be able to be still or we have to wait or tarry, as they call it. And it's done within the prayer closet, in the prayer shawl, in the in your quiet time with, with, with Christ. Um, and, and that's where we, we hear our, our answers whenever we can go to that place, that place where nothing else matters, just that now moment. And there you're able to receive. So I believe that prayer and meditation, I always say them together because to me, they definitely go together. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if you really do research <clears throat> on uh, on meditation, I mean, that literally is that what praying, that is what praying is. And it's just getting to be, uh, you know, discovering within yourself, going back within yourself again. Um, and that's where, just like we were talking about, you know, encountering uh, different beings and entities. Um, it's, it's a form of channeling. I mean, meditation is a form of channeling. And you can heal yourself. You can be guided um, through guides, um, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely say they are definitely one and the same. Yeah. Um, they're just worded differently yeah me personally it's the wording too because like a lot of times i'll i'll, I'll deal with clients who uh do sessions with and they'll say they, they want to know if i channel and i think i think that um that is a buzzword too like oh are you a channeler do you 
you know, is there an, an entity or something that's going to talk to me through you, that type of, and people, because people want to touch the divine. People want to know that they're not alone and that the other side is real. So I feel like I can get some kudos points if I say yes, but I, I don't because I feel like that I, I channel the Holy Spirit. Like I'm able to work with the Holy Spirit and I can work with energy. But as far as letting an angel or a being take over my body and speak to you, um, it doesn't happen like the movies. But we're able to feel as we're able to discern, um, we're able to kind of pick up on those energies, why they're there, how they can leave and the different energies that are around you as well. So um, I've, I've got some studying that I'm doing and I know this isn't the case for every channeler, but there's a big link that I found between people who channel and get this ventriloquist how they're able to separate themselves from their body and use the word channeling to say what they really feel. Like they have all of these ideas and these thoughts and they feel like they're a healer and that they can, they can reach deep down and move things around, but they don't have the confidence to speak it in boldness. So they have to, it's not, I didn't say that it's the spirit. The spirit told you that when they knew it before they went in. So they changed their voice at times Bashar, all of these guys. Um, I watched the documentary on ventriloquist and the person sitting here. Hold, so it shifts the blame. They're able to say what they want with the puppet or they're able to say what they want through the spirit. Oh, I didn't tell you that the spirit did. It takes the it takes the repercussions off of you. And that's a weird thing that I found. And I and, and the reason that I wanted to look into that and I and I wanted to look into it at all was because i I do a, a a character like I do voices and stuff. Right. And uh, and just playing around that voice and I embody a person and it's essentially a persona. And I do it as a just changing my voice and being a character I, with some friends. And I, they used to have me do prank calls all the time and stuff. But I could say stuff as that character that Derek can't say. And I could say it with confidence and I can even prophesy like say biblical stuff and prophesy the future over people with without fear of repercussion or if, if I'm wrong. And it's weird that I found the, the, the link between me and that that character that I've created. He can do it. Um, the ventriloquist, the blame falls upon the puppet and they'll, they'll curse you out. Somebody will sit there and have a ventriloquist and he'll curse you out and or a, a woman will be in the room and they'll they'll degrade the woman and say how good she looks and I want to sleep with you all this kind of weird stuff that that little shy timid nerdy guy would never say but that puppet allows him to do it the same thing with the channeling I've noticed that people have this insight people have this stuff that they would like to share but the them and themselves don't have the supernatural ability or the confidence to do it so the entity do you see what I'm saying Oh yeah, definitely. I've I've actually been noticing that myself. I've been actually observing that for a past year. Is a lot of people really, you know, I mean, we can't be in it or not. Um, but I definitely do feel that their self worth isn't that their worth is important. Then. Um, you know, I mean, for the voice, you know, I mean, for voice, I'm voice, you know, your voice is very important, and you have that. You are in this body, you know, and you got to have that, you know, you, you have to express that you are expressing yourself, you know, you're expressing w what you feel inside. Um, and no matter what it is, you know, it's still you, you know, you got to be able to handle what you talk about. I mean, you know, I've noticed some people, they'll talk about their, say, uh, Bob, for example, say Bob will talk about, you know, how he's, you know, he's so negative some days causes some days he's learning stuff and then he'll create this character name uh we'll just call him green uh he'll create this green character he's super positive and exciting telling people about you know the fifth dimension and you know things of that nature um so it's like it's, it's two different personalities like you said um i talk about a lot about personas and how personas really run a lot of people's lives um it's just a way of either not being able to find that balance within yourself uh, or just creating that uh, mask to to hide your feelings. Um, yeah. There's so many people that that really say, 
you know, I, I wear a mask of happiness, but really I'm sad exactly. and lonely and stuff. And I'm like, you can't, you can't be doing that. You, you got to be able to become one with yourself. If there's something bothering you. You're, you're still connected. You can't just shove it to the side and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to get back to you later. No, you got to fix yourself. Cause at the end of the day, it's going to eventually, it's going to, to, um, overflow. Yeah. Your cup is going to overflow and you're going to end up having a mental breakdown or things. Like that. Yeah. And that's really how, um, simplistic, personas and spirits are like we like to be like really deep we like think like i said go back to we think that they're an, an entity that lives in a faraway galaxy that can come here and do mischief which that's true too right but a spirit is just like we're talking is a vibration it's a thought pattern right isn't that what the scriptures teach us that the spirits are vibrational thought patterns that are called strongholds in your life that affect the way you think affect the way you believe uh, we, we call them ungodly beliefs as well. You know, something that goes against what God has in store for you for your greater good. It's an ungodly belief. It shouldn't be there. We have to deal with it. Why is it there? Did you invite it in? Did somebody lie to you? And in, and we talk about Solomon, we go back to the queen of um, Sheba, which had all these questions to to trick Solomon and to prove him wrong and to disprove his his God and th- and make him look bad and his God d- discredit Yahweh and he answered all of her questions that she had to trick him and her beliefs and when he did that those evil spirits left by answering those questions that those beliefs that she had the same way whether it's a doctrine whether it's a lie fear based thoughts that that you believe. Somebody told you, you've accepted, and you, it takes a prophet, someone who can speak the word of God or speak the word of truth over you, and watch those spirits leave. Just as simple as a conversation. That's when you are doing it right. When we don't have to have a session, we can do a session. But just through conversation, we have the ability to discern the spirits that are at play and tell them where they can go to get rid of them. Through conversation without the person even knowing sometimes. But the ones that are take they take root, a lot of times that's where the deliverance sessions come in. And uh, then we have to take it a little bit further and really focus some intention on it. But a lot of times we can we that's just the power of truth, the power of the spoken word in general. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. And then uh, I wrote this down just so I don't forget. So I'm um, getting back into uh you know, different top patterns and things like that. You know, we have to look into, you know, like parasites and um, those inner demons. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, when they learn about channeling and things like that, or even just, you know, they don't know where these negative thoughts are, or I'm in a happy mood or a sad mood, things like that. They don't know where that source is coming from, like you said. Um, and that's where you have to learn how to do that uh, self-searching and self-healing. Um, and this is where you learn about... Uh, uh, spiritual parasites, you know, spiritual parasites is a huge thing because it's not just, you know, just ET beings and stuff like that. It's actually, you have to look beyond the veil and look that there is actual parasites that can attach to the body. And if it's so bad, you're not taking care of yourself. And I'm not no doctor. Don't call me on that. <laughs> but if you look into like cancer and tumors and yeah. things like that, uh, a lot of times that is where your spiritual being is being uh it's being sucked your energy is getting sucked out and it's always in interesting areas like the stomach for example that's where some of our main source of energy is with the spirit body yeah and a lot of parasites and cancers and things like that happen within the within the stomach and it happens within the brain as well tumors and cancers which is also where the third eye is neo gland is as well as how you can um, project life and things like that. Um, and there is a lot of studies and even scientific research that was when the spirit leaves, it exits through here. Yeah. So you just have to put all these pieces of the puzzle together. It's, it's <laughs> life, I mean, life. Life is complex, man. Yeah. Really? I mean, the whole, the whole parasite thing, just that by itself um, with understanding entities and how they work, you have to be able to understand the physical realm which in in a sense is the microscopic realm that we can't see them unless we have a a, a micros 
a really powerful microscope that lets us see these tiny beings on your skin, in your body, in your eyes, right, all over the place. Um, some of them good, some of them bad. Many of them live off of the bacteria on your skin. When you bathe, bathe, you're, you're killing a lot of these parasites. When you wash your hands, you're killing a lot of them. You can't see them. And many of them fight each other. They're at war with one another. And this is an unseen war that we don't know. And the ancients didn't know until they was able to able to, to see them with microscopes. And I, I'm pretty sure you've heard me talk about this, but there's a lot of ancient texts that were dealing with the banishment of dragons and of worms out of the body to, to make the worms leave the body. And they would ward off these worms that would get in there and they would make them sick. I mean, what is it that makes you sick? It's the parasites, right? You let parasites get in your body. You get sick. What did what did Jesus call that? They call it a spirit of infirmity of any type of ailment that was a spirit that got into your body and that we see it's done with almost a spiritual war essentially because we can't see it but there's a war going on that we can't see on our body and for our body the same way it's going on spiritually of these beings that live off of us our fears our emotion they suck the energy they suck the life out of us and they're there and we have to deal with them it's 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 as above so below What's happening in the spirit realm is happening on earth. What's happening on earth is happening in heaven. What's, what's happening in heaven is happening inside of us. The kingdom of heaven is within. It's a mirror image. It's a mirror image. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep, and it's and that's where you have to really learn on how to uh, uh, look at yourself. Because, yeah, because, uh, I mean, if we all look through a microscope, man, I mean, we would all literally just freak out with all the parasites and everything like that. You really just don't don't realize what surrounds you, both spiritually and you know physically, um, until you really pay attention. Yeah, you know, pay attention. I mean, just like uh, um, cab trails in the sky. You know, I just talked to a person last week, and I said, "Oh, hey, there's a cab trail. What's a cab trail?" Yeah, I thought a lot of people knew about this already. Yeah, but you know, it's it's just that self awareness is is learning that that you do have an inner inner fight within yourself you know um with these parasites you know and how i view it is you know is you got you got an angel on one shoulder and a demon on the other shoulder you know they always use that that phrase and yeah. that's just going in your body you got you got viruses and antiviruses they're constantly colliding with your blood cells and white blood cells and things like that it's it's your whole body itself is its own being and you have a huge just like osmosis jones you have an osmosis jones uh, uh, life within your body. Yeah. And it can mess with you in your mind yep. and your gut, the food that you're eating, the intake, all that stuff. It oh, all yeah. plays about how you feel mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, everything, everything comes into play with it. And it's all part of spirituality. That's how complex it is. And, and it really gets down to what you want to focus on too. It's hard to focus on all of it. It's a lot. It's overwhelming, but you got to start oh, yeah. somewhere, right? Yep. Definitely. Yep. And not, not a lot of people, you know, um, do research like I do. Not You have to be very open-minded. If you're closed-minded, you're only going to focus on one perception. Everything yeah. else fades then, away and you can't really put the pieces of the puzzle together. And then you're the only one that's right a lot of times when you studied and you're, you're closed-minded. And you're like, nope, I've studied it. This is the way it is, you know. <laughs> and uh, and there's many different perspectives on all of this stuff that we're talking about. There's a, most There's a bunch of perspectives that would say that would demonize everything that we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, um, oh, yeah. everybody's, everybody's, um, reality is, is, is subjective to their experiences. And, um, right. and, and so we've been to a lot of these places and it's weird for me because I've been to the channeling place or the, the dealing with spirits and entities. When I was a teenager, I got possessed and I almost died. Like I was going crazy, man. It was very bad, uh, very bad, and uh, I was delusional. But now I'm st I'm in that same realm as I, I got healed and got set free and 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 had this journey with Christ and into the light. Now He's able to show me how that that side works, and I know the pitfalls. So with t with talking about it, um, we always want to, like you said at the beginning, you want to protect yourself. You want you need to do the study, and don't just 
you know, don't don't just go into it blindly because there are pitfalls and there are dangers. And there's people out, there's just like there's people out here that want to deceive you. Teachers, there's entities that want to deceive you as well. So just to be on top of your game. But but with it, don't fear anything. Understand that really perfect love casts out all fear and love is the key. Love is what all of the Bible, the scriptures hang upon love those commandments and there's nothing greater than that no i don't care what anybody tells you there's nothing greater than universal love and and to to be not teach the message of christ but be the message of christ to a world who who many people have never experienced love and then you're the walk and talk version of jesus you're the word made flesh walking around dealing with your christ come back you're the resurrection of christ back on the earth and people will never experience that but but through conversation with you people this is for everybody this isn't just for adam or me this is for everybody listening that's what we always want to make it clear that that's what it's about it's about for you to take these concepts and these ideas and to put them to work put them to use and then let god blow your mind work with god don't work against them that's our problem working against god and we got to eventually get to a point we're like okay let me just submit myself to the process let me see what's really going on here and we being and, and life begins to open up we begin to see the synchronicities and all of these things happening in our lives and um those are amazing those are beautiful so i guess one last question man and since i mentioned synchronicity what do you think synchronicities are man uh, like some of the first- crazy ones you know what i'm saying just like that only you and god would know <laughs> you know <laughs> oh man that's that's a tough one um because, like, with me personally, I've always used, you know, Christ Joshua has always walked beside me at all times. Um, to me, I've always viewed myself as an observer. I look at all aspects, and um, one of the key things is what I've learned is that we don't want to, when we talk to people, we don't want to say, hey, this is my truth. You need to listen to me. Yeah. What you're doing is wrong. Yeah. You need to be able to learn to communicate with other people. And listen to their story, yep. and you be calm and collective about it, and you speak your your experiences and intertwine it together yeah. so there's no arguments. Yeah. If you're calm collective, you're good. But if you start saying, hey, this is my truth, this is what's going on, what yeah. you're doing is wrong, it's, it, it, we don't learn anything from it. Because we can all learn from each other. I don't care what state you're in, whether you've had no experiences yeah. with spirituality, or if you're if you're huge into the church and you've encountered many things like yourself, mm-hmm. you know, it, we have to learn how to better communicate. With each other. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a huge key. And it could be hard to learn, especially coming from a religious standpoint where you have to be right. Cause you, you stake, like I say, you stake your eternity upon it, upon these, these belief systems. You give your hard earned money to this pastor uh, for this belief system. So, somebody who comes along and challenges what your pastor is teaching or what you have staked your eternal salvation upon. So you get defensive, you get this weird uh, uneasiness in your body. You want to leave, you want to be irate and and mean and and belittled, but you have to like come and you want to be right about all everything. And that, that's just, that's crazy for someone to believe that they're right about every single thing. Right. And people believe that though. They believe that yep. them and their church have the truth and the only truth. They, they don't have a piece of the truth, like the only truth. And, I, and there's many people that I followed over the years and pastors and teachers and, and preachers who who preach this way. And it's not right at all. Um, but I remember when I first was able to show grace and be around people who believed other things than me and me not get contentious with them and try to tell them that they were in a false religion or tell them that they were being deceived by the Catholic church and things like that. And to be able to have an interaction and find what we agree on and build upon that versus, well, you know what? You guys are pagan. Your religion is found upon paganism. Like I used to be real combative and stuff when I was in the church. And so for, for me to move into a more place of humility and, and less ego driven and less having to prove that I'm right to justify my own feelings Right. I have to make you look like you're wrong and feel like you're wrong and try to convince you to believe what I believe to justify or validate my belief or my disbelief, essentially, because maybe I am wrong. Right. That that type of thinking, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Like I always tell everybody, I'm like, you know, I'm always learning. Um, I never just get stuck in one way because 
you're going to constantly discover new things. And if you feel that you can't, um, then you're going to begin to limit yourself. But I want to want to talk about, since we've been talking about this, is acceptance. A lot of people feel that they have to to fit in or be accepted because they don't want to experience that uh, black sheep aspect or be alone. Because, I mean, we all want to connect with people. Um, being open-minded like myself, you know, I can't really be fully open with people. So I just have to just uh, talk to them um, from what they're talking about. Yeah. Just kind of hints, hints of truth or hints of, uh, of what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people have this, uh, this acceptance issue where, you know, they, they just want to be accepted. They want to be loved. Yeah. And, you know, one of the key things with love is that we're looking to look outside of that, uh, of that, uh, what we perceive love. You know, love is, love is an energy. Love is an energy that can overflow within your being. Um, it's, it's, it's that sense that when you love yourself and learn how to love yourself, then that acceptance of love will flow out to you and others. Um, but without that truly understanding, because a lot of people are just like, Oh, let me give you a hug. No, I love you <laughs> like that. Right. Right. You know, and, and that's just kind of like a, a one moment. Oh, Hey, that felt good. Right. And it, and it does. I yeah. mean, you, you smile at somebody, man, that can just brighten up yeah. their whole day. Yep. Um, I'm around people a lot. So, you know, just giving people say, Hey, how's your day? You know, how can I help you? And smile, man, that can just brighten their whole day up. Yep. Uh, and so then it's up to each individual to discover on where that love I just gave them because I just gave them my love right there. And it's up to them to discover more of that love mm -hmm. and uh, learn on that love fully within yourself. Um, that's where that connection uh, with, spirit, with the spirit or like I said, with Christ Joshua begins to take effect. Small practical things. Like I said, a smile, a hug, you know, a, a handshake, you know, little things like that, man, just to let people know that they, uh, that they're cared about, you know, and, and that they're special because they are, and everyone is, even if they don't feel like that. And that's the whole thing is like, uh, showing love to people or be becoming love to people who have never felt love in their life. And then you are a walking embodiment of that love. Um, as we're coming upon the end of the show, man, I wanted to, uh, I promised some people that I would, I would, pray pray us out and that we i would pray over some people and uh anybody who's going through a hard time anybody who needs an activation in the spirit and just want to feel connected that you know we could pray um so I, if you want i'll let you pray uh start it off and it's just pr prayer as far as offering up over a blessing over someone but understanding just essentially the power of the spoken word as well as the, the, the word that is spoken over you and the power of you joining your faith with our faith to move and act um activation wherever you are whatever you're dealing with that it can be released that you can be renewed that you could be free in every area of your life this is the hope this is the gospel this is the good news that you can be free in every area no addiction no uh bad thoughts no ailment no nothing hurting you but to, to walk in true freedom and so we're going to join our faith with yours if you're listening if you need prayer we want to make sure that we're going to offer that so i'll let you take it adam and then i'll close this out all right sounds good all right. All right. Thank you, Yahshua, for uh, allowing this time uh, with our viewers and listeners. Um, you know, just uh, we're, we send love and healing out uh, for you guys and girls um, just to realize, you know, that that internal love has always been with you at all times. Um, you know, a lot of people just try to seek and seek and seek within self. Um, and outside self, um, but you just have to just take that time. Uh, so you just have to just take that time, and uh, you know, just allow that spirit to come within you, um, and learn and educate uh, yourself with that, um, and just uh, just bring that healing within. Um, you know, even at times, you know, when life seems to be really dark, um, that energy is always there. You know, Christ's energy is always there. Um, angels are always there for you at all. Um, just, just allow that spirit 
you know, even now, those who are listening, just, just allow that spirit to come within you and feel that eternal love um, that shines always with you at all times. Because you're, you're never alone in this world. Amen. Amen. And anybody out there who um, is just going through a rough time, anybody who's experiencing pain and trauma in their life and they're just trying to get over some things, I'm just going to speak a blessing right now. Father, I thank you for my friends right now, everyone who's listening, everybody who's watching this right now. I ask you to bless them and keep them. That the things that they're believing for, the things that they're hoping for, the, the, the person that they see themselves that seems so far away or so distant that they want to bring into reality, that person who is carefree, that person who is contention-free, God, I just pray that it would manifest in their life to show them that they can have whatever they ask for in prayer. They can have whatever they're believing for. So right now, any imaginations and any thoughts that war against the mind of Christ right now in my friend's life right now, we just bind them and we call them a curse and we send them to dry places even now that your rest and that your peace will fall upon anyone right now under the sound of my voice that they will find that peace and the peace that sets them free that they are free indeed and we thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding a peace that no man can give and no man can take away this is our inheritance that they would find you and seek you in that quiet place and that you will reveal to them the desires of your heart And they will begin to see themselves and see others the way that you see them. I ask for your vision. I ask for your mind and for your heart. Right now, bless in Jesus' name and Yahshua's name. Amen. Amen. Brother, thank you for coming on, man. If you want to share your pages and stuff where people can connect with you. Like I said, you have services and you do private one-on-one sessions with people that are very powerful for people who want to connect many people don't know how so that's essentially what we do is we set up a place of meditation of prayer to go into those realms and to go with them but then teach them how to do it for themselves so if you want to give your info out man and let people know how they can connect with you go ahead and do that oh yeah definitely um i got a public facebook page um you can uh just type it in at facebook at real talk adam starcy bay um, and I can give you guys private sessions um, if you feel the need that I can assist you in that. Um, as well as I'm also on Facebook, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> on YouTube as well um, at LightBeing444. And I give uh, different insights as well as uh, helping you guys learn how uh, to discover that stuff. So yeah, so I'm always here for you guys if you guys feel the call. Amen. Let me know if you guys want to see Adam back on the show again. Maybe do some roundtable discussions. We have a lot of like-minded friends, and I'm trying to do some more roundtable stuff. And if you'd like to see Adam get in on that and uh, see him uh, on the show more often, let us know in the comment section as well, just so we can kind of make plans moving forward. I think he'll make for uh, some great roundtable discussions with uh, him and a couple other friends of of like-minded interests. So, Um, With that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom again. Thank you, everyone who is supporting on Patreon. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. And there you can uh, sign up for any level of giving any any level that you want, uh, anywhere from a dollar up to 10, 15, whatever it is that you can do a month. um, All of it's appreciated. I thank you guys so much for helping out over there. And we're going to be going live a lot more. We've got a lot of uh, cool stuff that's coming on the way. we got some new merch available. If those of you who are watching on video, you can see some of the merch that we've designed and uh, some merch available at truthseeker.com. Also, the link is in the description there. Any way that you guys want to support is uh, appreciated 100%. So thank you, guys. Thanks for hanging out, man. I've totally enjoyed this. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I love each and every one of you guys. Peace, peace. Oh, yeah. What's up, Graham? I see you in the chat coming in late. What's up, my brother? Shalom, shalom, peace. Well, that does it for this 
episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.